I mentioned in a previous video about using this little hydraulics demonstrator to start a basic electronic series. So today, let's get started. Welcome to Electronics on Your Level, episode number one. We want to look at voltage. So what is voltage? Well, voltage is the electric potential difference between two points. So if we think of potential difference, think of it as maybe my altitude. If I ask you, well, what is, what is my altitude? You might say, well, based on what? Well, where I'm at and sea level. So based on sea level, my location is approximately 150 feet above sea level. So it's all in relation to two points and what's their difference. Now we use the water analogy using hydraulics as an example. We can think of voltage being similar to water pressure. A voltage from a source like a battery. It can be many different sources from solar panels to power supplies. But today we'll talk about a battery. And we measure this in volts to make it a little bit easier to understand. Think about a water tank. So if we have a water tank. And we actually put a valve right here at the bottom. Then our pressure, our pressure at this valve that lets the flow come out of the hose is going to be greater if the water level is higher than if the water level was lower. So our pressure is going to change based on the level in this tank. And of course if we had an even taller tank with the water level even higher, then of course our pressure will be greater at the actual valve or output. So if we think about battery voltage, we're kind of doing the same thing as measuring a pressure. We want to look at how much pressure do we have at the terminals between or potential between these two points. So we have to have this voltage or this pressure to do work. Now back with the circuit, we do know that without any power or voltage hooked, we can cut this switch on this little simple circuit and it will do nothing. All we have here is a battery connector, a single pole switch, it's a little toggle switch, and it's going to a little DC motor. It has terminals here and a wire nut here. As we hook up the nine volts, To the circuit, our circuit should now run, but how do we check voltage? Well, if we want to check voltage, we just simply bring in our voltmeter. In this case, it is a DMM or digital multimeter. It does a lot of different things. We go to volts DC. And if we go across our terminal of our battery, 9.14 volts. So this is similar to checking pressure on a water circuit or hydraulic circuit. So we have verified we have our 9 volts. Our switch is in the off position. If we cut it on, we have current flow and we see our motor running. This one happens to have a little arm where you can visually see it moving. Cut it off and no flow. On. So we're controlling the pressure getting to the motor. We're not allowing the battery pressure to get all the way through to the motor. Now that we looked at the electrical circuit, I want to take a look at the hydraulic analogy of a similar circuit. So now we have a, a diagram showing our 9 volt battery, which the positive was going to our switch, going through the switch, it would cut it on, it, it would go through the switch and go through the motor and back to the negative terminal. Q 
keeping the electrical circuit in mind, I now want to bring over the hydraulic analogy. I'm going to try to use some, uh, some double face tape to keep these syringes in place. So now what we have, representing the battery, we have pressure from our positive terminal that can be applied and go through a valve, which is similar to our switch. We can cut our flow on and off with this valve. Right now it is off, so even if I have pressure coming out of this battery like it's charged, it cannot get through to the motor. I don't know if this motor show up real well. I may have went too dark with the blue. Maybe that'll show up a little better. So if I cut the switch on and the motor runs, even though we can't see the pressure, we can see the motion that's creating in the motor. But here we can see what's going on as we visualize electrons flowing. And we will get into flow in the next episode. At this point, we're going to look at flow going from positive to negative. And we'll talk more about that later. But if I cut this valve or switch on and I have pressure, we have flow and we notice that electrons flow from one terminal to the other. Now if this were a rechargeable battery, in this case what we're demonstrating is not. We could actually take this out of the circuit and reverse the flow, we could recharge this battery just across with a supply, and we could do it all over again until the electrons run out. So this is just a quick demonstration and something we can visually see moving. Of a battery being discharged and having no more voltage or not enough voltage or pressure to be able to keep the circuit alive or the circuit moving. At this time it's depleted and we either have to replace the battery or if it was rechargeable we could we could simply take it out and recharge it. So we talked a little bit about voltage and pressure. Electrical pressure and volts is similar to water pressure in like PSI or pounds per square inch. It is a way to measure the pressure. I hope this water analogy works, showing in motion similar to electrons flowing. The water pressure and the flow examples, they help in understanding electron flow because we can actually see it visually, but they're not exactly the same. There are some limitations we'll find using this analogy. But we'll be using this for learning flow, components, AC, DC circuits. But once we reach the point where we learn about magnetism and active components, this analogy really reaches its limit. It's not that helpful anymore. Electron flow at that point is different. But for right now, we'll stay using this analogy and uh, visually learning. The whole goal of electronics on your level is after we do a lot of series of videos, people can come in at any level they need and maybe learn from the basics up. And we're doing basics more on a visual hands-on stuff you could do on your own typically. The stuff that we'll be going through in these courses, it'll be easy to get your hands on stuff. If nothing else, all this stuff's available at Radio Shack. But if you like me and have always taken things apart or enjoyed it, if you're watching this video, chances are you've always enjoyed taking stuff apart. And like me, I just never throw stuff away. I, I have junk like this everywhere, so it's easy to find something to work with. So today we got started with episode one, You're just starting off with the basics, but we'll have more episodes going from this point moving forward, and we just don't know where for sure we might end up. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, and thanks for watching.